Hi, my name is John Abels, and we're going to be talking today about uh, updraft carburetors, and we'll be using Zenith carburetors as my example. And uh, most of the wooden boats that we have uh, have these carburetors, uh, Century, uh, Garwood, um, Chrysler engines, Hercules, or Chris Craft engines, they, they all have used Zenith carburetors. Zenith's been around since like 1910, over 100 years. And the carburetor's a, a really interesting thing to uh, marvel at once you understand how they work. I'm gonna go through some of the theory and the practicality of it. And, uh, but in this short video, we won't have much time to do the deep dive, but I will provide a deep dive video into every aspect of uh, updraft carburetors later. And I'm going to show you first this, uh, this is a carburetor. This is an updraft carburetor off my own Chris Craft right here. And um, it is a model Zenith 63M series. And this particular carburetor was used from 1939 to, to 1962. So it was used a lot. And they also use the same type carburetor on tractors, industrial engines, and automobiles too. All the Model T's and Model A's, they all used updraft carburetors. And the updraft carburetor has been around a long time. So here's, here's a photo of a Chris Craft, looks like a Model K engine. And I'm gonna point out some of the parts. We're talking here about the updraft carburetor, and there it is. You can easily identify it right here. Here's the fuel pump back here, and then this is the line, the fuel line going into the carburetor. And this is the intake manifold right here. And you can notice that there's um, a, a line that runs from the exhaust manifold over here inside, and there's a, an area right here right above the carburetor that receives the hot um, coolant to help vaporize the fuel as it goes into the intake manifold. Is... So what's the job of a carburetor? The carburetor is designed to create a fuel that the engine can run off of by combining gas with air. Gas won't burn without oxygen and air contains quite a bit of oxygen. But there's a ratio that is ideal for combustion. And that ratio is uh, 15.2 to one. 15.2 to one part gas. So how does this occur? Well, the air comes into this horn through this uh, flame arrestor and then it comes up this area here, and at this point right here, gasoline is admitted to the air through a special system called a venturi. The venturi is a narrow area in the carburetor, and then within that venturi, the gas uh, turns atomizes into tiny droplets, and that gas and fuel mixture go out the top of this carburetor like this. We're going to discuss how does the gas get into the carburetor. Of course, there's a fuel line, which you, we all know about. The gas flows through here, down through a little screen, and comes into this bowl right here, and it fills up the bowl with gas. But something has to stop it from keep to keep it from going over. Inside the carburetor is a bowl that is cast in there and inside that bowl, we have the floats and there's two floats, one on each side of the bowl. And we're gonna show this to you in a little bit. Those floats will drop when, when the gas is being sucked out of this uh, bowl by this main jet or other, other uh, by the idle system. And then the float will go back up and shut off the gas coming in. So there's a constant action of this float going up and down admitting gas into the bowl. The air fuel mixture will go through this updraft carburetor 
become atomized at this main jet when it's running at above 1200 RPM and will go on up into the intake manifold right here. And it will be in it distributed amongst the six cylinders. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about the complexity of what the carburetor has to do. And remember we said that the ideal uh, fuel to air ratio was 15.2 to one air to gas for the most favorable combustion. But here's the reality. When you start the engine, the ratio has to be completely different. And when it's idling is different, and when it's in mid-range is different, and when it's in high speed, it's different. So the carburetor has to deliver the correct ratio during all these variable it's speeds. All the choke. And when this valve closes, it forces gas into this uh, throat of the carburetor into a very rich mixture of 11 to 11 parts air to one part gas. And so you get a lot of a lot of gas rich mixture to make it easier to start the engine. Then we move to idling where the engine might be just in neutral and just overcoming friction and idling by itself at 550 RPM or so. We have an idle network, it's called an idle network. It admits fuel into the carburetor throat through two ports, one of them up here slightly above the throttle plate right here. This is the throttle plate and one below. And this is controlled, the type of mixture is controlled with the idle mix. And way the idle mix works is this. When you screw the idle in more all the way to the right, counterclockwise or clockwise inward, it provides more gas, not less. It's kind of counterintuitive, but it actually going in uh, gives you more gas and less air. Then you have a mid-range, which would be like 1200, 13, 1500 RPM. And the main jet is not, uh, it, it produces too much fuel into the, into the Venturi uh, for the, the vehicle, for the, for the engine's needs. I said vehicle, sorry. Anyway, so what happens is there's something called an economizer. An economizer is ingenious. And what it is, is there's a, actually a, a, um, a valve port built into the shaft of the throttle. And it goes up from a vacuum up here in the intake manifold. It comes through here, comes all the way around to the float, the bowl, to the float, uh, the, the bowl, and applies a vacuum here, which makes the gas flow less into the main jet and it provides less gas into the stream. So the economizer basically leans out the air fuel mixture at mid-range. And then when the throttle is opened up all the way, which would be up and down, um, that then goes to the high, the high speed is the main jet, and that's this. And it will be it, putting out as much fuel as you, as you can imagine. Well, we're now going to take this part, this is a carburetor apart. This is uh, a uh, 63 series uh, Zenith. And uh, I'm going to go through various parts and explain things as we go. And I talked about the uh, flame arrestor, which is here. We I loosened the screw already. And um, we can take it off. And you know, these, these engines don't have air filters. They have flame arrestors. There's no air filter. And there's no oil filter either. Now, when we take it off, the first thing we see here is the uh, choke, the choke valve. There it is, right there. And it's wide open, right there. That means it's not doing any choking. So when I close it, let's see if I can close it. It's spring-loaded. I'm going to close it. You can see inside. There it is, closed. Now, Look at something that's kind of interesting here. There's a little poppet valve, it's called, and I'm going to push it, and we'll see how that um, opens a little hole in that plate. I don't know if I'm, I'm going to have to. This is the poppet valve I'm talking about, and it's spring-loaded right here, and uh, it 
it'll open like that in order to admit air if it's fully closed to prevent the engine from flooding. Sometimes these poppet valves are rusted shut. This one's not, it's working just right. Notice the carburetor is broken into two parts. This is the upper half and the lower half. And uh, I've already loosened the bolts here and we can separate it. But I wanted to point out this, this is the identification plate right here. And I did a little sandblasting to clean this up and the identification numbers are on there. So you can order the parts for this particular carburetor. This is the screen filter that filters the fuel coming in here from the fuel line. And we're gonna unscrew it. And I'm, I'm gonna show you this one's shot pretty much. And you can see that it actually has um, a hole in the bottom of it. And it has it's full of dirt, full of sand. So this would have to be replaced, but it's easily done. And there's a gasket that goes on here and without that gasket, this thing will leak and you don't want any leaks. Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the floats and when you're rebuilding the carburetor, you, you have to check the floats and you have to check the needle and seat, which I haven't shown you yet. But you can remove the floats by taking this pin right here and you remove the pin like this, right there. That pin comes out. And the floats, here are the floats, right there. They fit into the bowl, which I showed you earlier. I'll move this. This bowl, just, just like, oops, like this, you see? They're in the bowl. Here is the needle and seat. Now, I'm gonna pull this out, and there is the needle right here. I'm gonna set it right on there. That's what it looks like. Next, I'm gonna talk about the idle adjustment screw. That's this front right here. And as I mentioned before, it's right now I've got it turned all the way in and it's seated. That is a rich mixture. That means it's all gas and almost no air. You pull it out like this and it's more air. Now, how far out do you do, you do it? Well, they say you take three quarters of a turn and start it up and check your idle and then adjust it 25% at this a time. Carburetor, I just removed the accelerator pump, but it was rusted in place. It would not come out. So I put some PB blaster in there. The way this works is this will go all the way down. The vacuum will push, pull it down all the way. And then when you open the throttle, it comes back out. So we're gonna let this- The accelerator pump. And if your boat is having a problem when you hit the gas and it just bogs out and it won't run, this is gonna be the problem. It's either binding up in it or their vacuum to it is not sufficient. Of the accelerator pump well and the bowl, and as we talked about before, this fills up with fuel. This is a really good shot of the main jet nozzle, it's called right here. And, um, the fuel comes upward. The air fuel ratio comes right here. The air comes here and it atomizes right here. And you can see there's vacuum ports and this is a fuel port. All these have to be cleaned out and um, free of any debris. Here is something you're gonna need when you clean the carburetor. And this is on Amazon. And you can see it's about, it's $13 and change. But it can clean, it contains all of the little needles that you would need to clean any port in almost any carburetor. So you really need to have something like this if you're going to rebuild a carburetor. Picture of a carburetor kit and one of many different ones available. This particular kit has um, a lot of gaskets, but some of these gaskets, you don't use all of these. It's, this one kit might fit several different carburetors, but it does have a new needle and a new seat, and there's a washer for it right there, and there's a pin for the float um, to hold the floats in place. And so this type of a kit is, is readily available, uh, and they're not too expensive.